All right, so time for a quick update. Um, I've been working on a, uh, a do-it-yourself bike hat, uh, which is a super dumb idea because you're way better off just going and buying one um, because for the time and the effort and the materials and all that, it's probably genuinely cheaper for somebody else to have made the thing. But I've never wanted to do it the easy way, so I'm making my own. And I just want to take you through how I do that, how I've done that, what the process is, and what improvements I still have to make. So here we go. Step one was to procure um, a commercial bicycle hat, right? This is super duper standard stuff here. If you've never seen one of these, these are what the uh, old pros used to wear underneath their helmets or in lieu of a helmet. Um, they got a little elastic here on the back, uh, usually like a ribbon over the top of the thing. They got these rad brims and these will flip up right flip them down oh so good and you can get these loads of places for in the neighborhood of twenty dollars uh, they are probably all made by basically the same people um and if you look inside right basically i was trying to figure out a pattern there are some patterns for this online uh you can totally you should totally check some of those out but those are a different um style than this they're like different pattern so um so for this one what i did is I literally just measured off what I realized, right? Is this entire hat, if you look inside it, it's actually just four panels that sew together. Each panel has a dart that runs down the middle of it here, plus a brim, done. That's that's the whole thing. So and these four panels are all the same. So I measured off here, I measured off these guys, I measured off this, and from that, oh, also the third thing I noticed is doesn't seem to matter where you get your hat from, they're basically the same thing. Ribbon, no ribbon, same hat pattern, right? So, once I did that, then I made my first pattern, okay? And this one, I just made this out of duck cloth, I'm gonna transfer it to something else. And there's a couple of like really light chalk lines on here, so here's a hemline at the bottom. I like to leave generous seam allowances and trim back later. There's some uh, lines up here, it's an indication of dart length as measured off this line here. You can see a couple folds where I was experimenting with different points up in here. This guy here, these mi these middle ones, those are the folds I actually go by. And when you, uh, when you do these, you cut out four of these, like it says, <laughs> and then this guy up here is gets pinched in like that. Yeah, you sew that. And that gives you your dart, and you make four of these. You sew the outer edges together on these, and then um, and then you add a brim. This is traced off an existing brim. This is just on cardstock, um, and uh, this is just double layer fabric. I put um, craft EVA foam inside these, which is not like what the legitimate ones. The legitimate ones feel like they're made with like a PET plastic. I suspect if I got like a big like two liter bottle of soda or something, I could cut that plastic off the bottle uh, into this shape and have that feel right. But the foam actually works really nicely and it's kind of soft. So if it gets smashed, it doesn't dig into you at all. So that's kind of nice. Anyway, you'll need one of them. You'll need four of these. You cut those joints out. You sew your darts. You sew your panels together. You add your brim. You add your elastic and you're most of the way there. Pretty straightforward. Now. In the commercial hats, if you look at the, the real deals, they're all surged on the inside, right? Obviously. Um, I don't have a serger yet. <laughs> uh, and so I use a zigzag stitch and that seems to be working pretty okay. Again, I leave my, um, my seam margins fairly generous and then after I sew the thing, um, I actually trim them back by hand. Um, which is time intensive and not at all production reasonable, but it does allow me to do a little bit of tweaking if I'm making one of these for a child or for myself. It gives me a little bit of size variance that I can build right into the single um, uh, pattern on this. Anyway, so I do that, and then I'll show you my first one. My first one, just because I always have duck cloth around, you can tell it's my first one because it says V1 right on it. I always have duck cloth around, um, and so I just did my first one out of duck cloth, and this was in no way uh, meant to be a reasonable uh, bike hat. It's very, very stiff. Uh, it's very heavy duty. Uh, I used the wrong elastic. I used the wrong stitching back here. Um, I've never really stitched with elastic before, so this is all, this is just experimentation to figure out if this was even plausible 
to do something like this. Um, and so you can see I didn't even bother to like finish stuff here. Uh, I trimmed back some of the internals, but like I didn't double stitch this. There's no sweatband. It's the wrong elastic. I, a whole bunch of stuff is wrong. But what was right was that the general shape of the hat and the general look of the hat was plausible. So I knew my pattern wasn't totally nuts. I made some tweaks to it and I knew that I was on the right track. Um, so what do you do after you do a version one? You do a version two. So I made a bunch of changes. Instead of using duck cloth, I used this as some old Oxford cloth. It is unbelievably soft and lovely in the hand. Um, and you'll, I, look, you're gonna have to forgive me because this is like, the stitching up at the front is all just butchered uh, <laughs> right to hell. But, um, but uh, with a couple tweaks to the pattern and a little bit more work on how to sew with elastic and uh, a slightly different application of said elastic um, and a little bit of different work on the inside, I ended up with something that's a lot closer both in shape and feel and style to a production hat. Now, the cloth isn't dead accurate, um, but the pattern is right and the shape is right and the bill is better. Um, and so I knew that the next step past this, uh, and you can see I actually did like proper double stitching around the edges and all that. Um, so I knew the next step past this one was to get even more accurate fabric and quit uh, faffing around with, with garbage elastic and try to do <laughs> A more proper job with the thing and see if I could get really close. So V2, totally wearable by the way, led to uh, V3. V3 is made out of like a nice thin regular cotton twill. Um, I did contrast stitching on it honestly so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, my finished product I don't think would ever quite go that way. Um, the, the bill is, God help me, centered mostly. That's been remarkably difficult to get right. Um, the shape of the hat is a lot closer. I'm still not quite dead on with the top of it, but it, we're getting there. The, um, the elastic in the back was so close to being right, and then I <laughs> totally like eh, on, the, on one side of it. So over here is all stretchy and gathered and nice, and then I, I spaced out and forgot over here. Uh, but still, it's a lot closer. And then on the inside, this is where some real actual progress was made here. Um, that is a cotton, a flat cotton braided sweatband, right? So now I've actually got lining on that, which is nice. Gives it that good finished look and a little more absorbency for you. You sweat on your brow. And then on the back over here, there's actually a piece of the appropriate real elastic sewn underneath that. Not very well, but sewn underneath. And this hat is actually fairly viable as a hat. I somehow managed to cut a hole in my own hat while working on it. I, I don't even understand myself sometimes. But there she is. It's got some wayward stitching on it to be sure. It's nowhere near perfect, right? Like the bill's a teeny bit janky, but it's like a little uneven on the stitching and all of that. But like that's pretty close. I could wear that under a helmet on a bike ride. Um, and it, it fits really pretty nicely. Um, and no one would be the wiser that that was handmade by me. So there you go. If you're thinking about doing a bike hat, I'd say it's a really, a pretty good entry level project. I've never really done a ton of, um, of stuff that's that's wearable, like clothing. I do bags and I do you know, modifications to things, but like a from scratch, from a pattern, thing that I'm going to wear on myself. It's not something I've ever really done before. And the level of like sort of like fine fidgety little detail to these is high enough to make it challenging for me, uh, but not so high as to be completely frustrated. It's three tries, one, two, three, to a viable hat that you could wear without people being asking what the hell's on your head. Um, so if you're into it, that's what that uh, that's the direction. Now, look, you maybe are thinking, well, why would I do all that if you, the first step was to buy a viable hat? Well, here, I'll do you a favor, okay? I'm gonna show you my pattern. I'm gonna get it squared up on my grid here so you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches. Really looking like six and three quarters inches wide. 
by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and maybe a bit, but probably honestly eight, because I tend to cut everything really generous. So you're talking a seven inch by eight inch rectangle with the corners nipped from this hemline. I, I think I gave myself three quarters of an inch of seam allowance here. This is a center line up this, and from this hemline to the base of the dart is three inches. The dart extends all the way to the top edge, and I bring the edges in so that only my seam allowance for my outer edges remains. Okay, so there's that. You should be able to make one of these based on that layout without any real trouble. And then for the brim, we'll line that up on the grid as well here for you. And you're looking at, oh, there, you get it all even. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half inches wide. One, two, three and a quarter inches tall. All right, hold that nice and still so you can get a good look. Screen cap it if you need to. And that is your brim shape. And you are mostly there, guys. Uh, I would love to see your own attempts at this sort of thing. I think for my next one, uh, I'm gonna actually sew another one in this twill fabric. Again, try to get my finishing a little bit better, right? And then I think I'm gonna actually use my Cricut to maybe cut some heat transfer vinyl and do a logo on here, and then maybe also on here, and get that full finished look going on. Maybe, we'll see. But I also have some really nice, I just found some really nice tartan wool that I've got around. And I think I might do a wool one of these for, because it's winter here right now. So wool one of these for wearing under my helmet when it's a bit chilly out for that proper old school street cred. Anyway, DIY bicycle hat. Go get them, show me what you've made.